If you look all around me in this stunning alpine environment of Val Myra in northwest Italy, I think it really hammers home the fact that we're in very difficult technical terrain. And of course, being at around about 1800 meters, that's 7,000 feet, we've got altitude as well. We've also got very unpredictable weather. It's actually got me thinking, what's actually the best bike and kit to be riding in this kind of environment? Now the weather is literally closing in on us here in the Alpi Maritime area of Northwest Italy. And to help me analyze and discuss the whole business of what bike, what motor, what battery, and also what kit to wear, is a friend who's joined me on some big adventures all over the world, A.D. Nash. Hi, Steve. A.D., what a place. Amazing, eh? Spectacular. Now, AD, I think possibly the first question everyone wants to know about is to do with what motor should you choose in a place such as this? It's a hard environment, so are we talking full power or the new breed of sort of lightweight mid-power bikes? Ah, uh, for here, Steve, full power all the way. I mean, oh. fire roads get you so far, but there's technical, long, hard, bouldery, steppy terrain. You need the power. Yeah, it's a tough place. You know? I mean, yeah. e even though here in the Alp Maritime, guys, we've got a lot of military tracks, but those military tracks are pretty kind of worn in places. Uh, Amy, there's lots of motors in the market. We've got, you know, we've got Shimano here, the new EP801, which has got more, more power than it did have previously, got the Bosch CX, but there's, there's loads of other motors in the market. You've got, um, you've got the Brose, you've got the Yamaha. What else have we got? Oh, forget the Bafang and the Giant Sync Drive in Scotland. Oh yeah, those are pretty tough yeah. rides as well. So I think, uh, from me and Aidy's point of view, I think the full power motors are the way to go. We're not saying that the likes, you know, of you know the um, Shimano EP8 RS on the Obeya, or maybe the Trek uh, Fuel EX with the TQ motor, or maybe the Santa Cruz with the Fazua uh, Ride 60. You can get to these places, but I think. Those are primarily for more of the fire roadie, the smoother single track. What we're talking about in this video is actually the very technical riding that me and you have been on, right? No, absolutely, yeah. I tell you what, that cloud is getting lower and lower. Yeah, it is, isn't by it? By the second. Uh, now, the next subject, I think, is battery. Uh, before I do that, I, I do want to qualify something I just said about the low to mid-power bikes. You can get them to places such as this, and you can ride some fantastic single track. It's just in that really hard ground. And what I find that happens with me is I do tend to use the higher power modes, which therefore means you can, I'm going to use a lot more battery. Yes, you can get range extenders, but AD, the whole business of battery capacity, we've got a Sam 50 on the new run here. You know, there's other bikes such as the Specialized Levo's got a, um, a 700 on it. We've seen many giant bikes with 800s. Mm -hmm. We've got a 900 watt hour in the Spectral on here. Also comes a 720. What do you think when it comes to battery capacity? I think a lot of it depends personal circumstances as well. You could have a lighter battery, one in your backpack, big 900 depends how much you weigh mm -hmm. so many different factors yeah but i think i think what we found is when we're going for the big unpredictable rides remember route planning route finding is key when you're in a place like this yesterday's ride hopefully there'll be some images on screen now we were actually coming out coming back from the mountain at nine o'clock at night having started at seven o'clock in the morning so to do a ride like that does require a lot of battery capacity simply to get you over the tech terrain as well because the techy terrain does eat the battery it does as we've seen in boggy ground uh-huh i mean bigger is better right i think so yeah. especially when it comes to big mountain rides so the goats the goats and sheep are coming down the mountain and uh we found ourselves uh, crouched under a rock. You might have seen uh, me on many EMBN shoots where we're trying to shelter from the crazy weather. Um, 
I want to talk now about the clothing that we frequently wear on trips to alpine and mountain environments. Uh, also, you might see that back at home in Wales, in the Y Valley, I frequently got some, some waterproof trousers and also a waterproof jacket on. Uh, if you see a video that I did with Danny McCaskill in Torridon in Northwest Scotland, um, I mean, some of the craziest weather I've ha ever had to endure. Actually, talking of endure, I'm actually wearing an endure. Now, Gore, actually, I didn't mean to say that, but it's just, just so happens I did. So Gore, I've actually seen the fact that I've been wearing one of their jackets for about six years. And they're like, well, maybe I need to have an update. And when I'm looking for clothing, I'm looking for breathability, waterproofness, um, windproofness as well, really key, especially when you're coming down off the mountain and also when you're on co in cols where it's quite windy and you're trying to do a piece to camera, you know, and you can get a chill quite quickly. Um, Aidy, you've got a preference of how you go riding in the mountains, isn't you? I mean, it's obviously, what, tell us, talk us through that. Yeah, I, I always use layers. So when I've got backpacks, jackets, base layer for me is probably the most important. Yeah. A bit like a second skin that keeps you, sort of, stops you getting clammy and cold and, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, as I mentioned, Go have very kindly stepped in and helped us out on this trip to the Alpi Mari team. Um, I'll give you an example of, of this jacket. It's the, it's the new Endure jacket. So um, it's go wear. It's, uh, it's pack like plus uh, 2.5 layers. And to point out some of the features of this jacket. So it's, um, it's got a tough outer material, which is laminated onto that Gore-Tex Gore membrane. Um, and also on the inside, Aid, I don't know if you agree, I think it's like, I've got like a, just, just a shirt underneath here. But I think this material is really quite, it's quite nice against it, the skin, isn't it? Yeah, it is really nice against the skin. Um, some other features. Now, I'm gonna stand up to show you this, this, what I mean is, I'm new to the whole helmet thing, but when you're in the mountain, and I think the ability to, to cover your helmet, hopefully my mic, well, my mic might have gone quiet now, but I'll just talk, just talk. Okay, anyway, so you've got full helmet coverage, but more than that, if you put your backpack on, now this is really key for me. So obviously my, my radio mics are in my pocket, but I need quick access to my pocket. So you've got your main, your main sort of belt there on a, on a backpack, which you should take to a mountain. We'll talk about backpacks later, really. Mm -hmm. I can actually get my hands in my pockets. You know, I might have some kit in there, or I might actually just have to warm my hands. So there's my setup. Endure jacket, helmet coverage. Um, the Gore Wear's got the Gore-Tex on it, and uh, it's windproof, breathable, and waterproof. Boom! Aidy, what have you got in your bag there? Well, I've got gloves, waterproof trousers, pump, some tubes, first aid kit in here, hot water for the coffee. And where's your tools? Um, for quick access. Aidy's forgotten to mention that I've actually got the coffee machine and the tools. Come on, Aidy, I'll show you what I got in my box. Actually, folks, I'm not gonna talk about tools. It's literally started to rain, so let's know what tools you take for your mountain adventures. AD, this is a big question. The question now is about what bike do you use on a mountain adventure? Now, me and AD have ridden in some incredible environments on quite a wide range of bikes. 125 mil, 140, 150, 160, even 170 on our recent trip to the Isle of Skye, where we climbed some pretty serious slabs. We've also ridden mixed wheel sizes in different places. Do you remember our trip to Torridon? Yeah. We had a 29 inch wheel cube. We had a 170, 180 mil cube. Mm -hmm. I recall on that trip, you preferred the 29. I did, I'm short of travel. And why was that, do you think? I think maneuverability, bigger wheels to help you in there. Or to help you roll the... over the rocks. Yeah. And. You know, good geometry, it's not all about big travel. It's not about big travel, but nevertheless, we've done a big trip to 
uh, Skirban in Scotland, where we both rode Stance bikes, giant Stance E plus, mm -hmm. 125 mil, and they coped with it, didn't they? Absolutely, yeah. And I think it comes back to what you mentioned earlier, the type of terrain. Fortunately, we were in kind of bogland, sheep, single track stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. But in a place like this, very nasty terrain. Literally, this is a classic example of why you need good kit, folks. Um, we've got here a 29 inch, 150 mil front and rear Neuron. We've got a Canyon Spectral on, which is 29, 27.5. That's 150, 160. So similar in travel, but different wheel size. What's been your choice here at 10,000 feet in the Alp Maritime? You know, having ridden both, I really like this mixed wheel size on this steep technical terrain. Really? So, yeah. You see, I think it's actually a myth that a 29, 27.5 bike can get around corners quicker than a 29 inch wheel, but I think it's a total myth. Oh no, absolutely. You can get a long bike around anything. Right. I think time for me to put our hoods on. I know, can we do that? This now? is absolutely, <laughs> honestly, we didn't, we didn't plan this. I mean, how could we plan this? And that's the whole thing about a mountain. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got, I have to put my trousers on. <laughs> We've got trousers too. We'll put the trousers on in a minute. So what we're saying is, you can get away with short travel in certain mountain environments. For example, in Scotland, it's a landscape which is more weathered. It's an older landscape, which means there's kind of less rocks. It's more bog in places. But in the younger alpine environment, it's jaggedy. It's it's horrible, isn't it? Yep. So what I think what we're saying there is wider tires maybe 29, 27.5, and also maybe a little bit more travel, right? Mm-hmm. And I Yes would, or no? <laughs> yes, but I would, I would also say it's not all about big forks and big stiff bikes. So you need something with a bit of give in it, a bit of natural flex to take the harshness out. I think what it all comes down to, folks, is when you're choosing an e-mountain bike, suspension design and kinematics is actually really important. So an e-mountain bike, which is lively. So you don't want a bike which is quite, how can I explain it? You don't want a bike which is kind of a bit dead in, in, on, the, on the land. You want a bike which you can, you can move around and it's, you, know, you can skip on it, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, folks, sorry, we're gonna wrap things up. Uh, the weather really is now upon us. AD's getting his trousers on. He's actually putting them on back to front. AD, you need to put them on. <laughs> Do you actually know how to do that? The label is there. Can I just show you, please? There's actually, look, there's zips there so you can put the trousers on over your shoes. Common sense. Anyhow, folks, we're gonna have to go. Uh, I think this video is actually more about you guys engaging in the type of places you ride, what bikes you ride, what kit you wear, what tools you take, as I mentioned earlier. There you go, ad has got his trousers on, which is great. Uh, folks, thanks, thanks so much for joining us. Any questions about bikes and kits, let us know and we'll get involved in the comments below. Doesn't he look lovely?